A jaw-dropping discovery in France has seen researchers uncover a 2,800-year-old burial of what is thought to be an Iron Age princess who was royal to this region all those many years ago. 20 miles outside Lyon, archaeologists identified an imprint in the ground and after initial excavation that identified that it was in fact a triangular burial synonymous to the region at the time, they also discovered a bone fragment and this gave the researchers a great indicator that they were about to discover something incredibly significant. Fragments of the woman's pelvis, both femurs, parts of the skull and the sacrum were among the bones found with the treasures. As the excavation unfolded and the burial artifacts began to come to light for the first time in nearly 3,000 years, archaeologists at the dig announced the discovery of an ancient princess dripping with blue glass beads and other highly symbolic jewelry including a copper belt buckle. Described by the archaeologists as a treasure trove discovery, the higher class woman was adorned with bracelets with blue glass and copper beads that were placed on each of the woman's wrists, according to the archaeologist from the National Institute for Preventative Archaeological Research. The princess possibly belonged to the beaker culture that mysteriously disappeared, possibly as Hyperborea fell beneath the waves north of Britain. However, the Hausstadt culture dominated France around the time the bodies were buried, which is known for its emphasis on agricultural and fine artifacts. Towards 800 BC, people had begun to live in forts, heavily defended by walls and moats due to growing conflicts. Tribes had also begun to exchange copper and tin for making bronze and iron around this time with each other, and the Mediterranean with Cornwall and Britain being the main source of these raw materials. And this is echoed in the buckle with a clip made of copper alloy suggest she had been wearing a belt, probably made from leather a clear sign of the wide birth of trade taking place at the time. Her tomb is one of the three burial mounds identified at the site that are thought to date back to the first half of the 8th century BC, which was the beginning of the Iron Age with human remains in one of the other tombs showing signs of having been cremated, while the other tomb appears to have been added in the 5th century BC, together with a four-post funerary monument surrounded by a shallow moat. However, it is unknown if this is in fact royal, but highly suggestive that it is either royal or a high-class citizen for the period. The tomb is divided in two with both halves containing cremated human remains. In one half, archaeologists found what appears to have been a wooden box lined with limestone, in which washed bone and bracelet fragments had been placed. They suggest that an empty space next to this could have been used for offerings or perishables such as food. In the other half, bones mixed with charcoal from the funeral pyre were buried inside a basket-type container. The state of the bones make it impossible to determine the sex of the cremated person, but the ornaments, an iron belt clip and copper alloy bracelet, suggest it was a woman. The grave's occupants live while the Hallstock culture, known for its fine artifacts and emphasis on farming and metalworking, was dominant in southeastern France and most of Europe. By 800 BC, long-range trade routes had been established for the exchange of copper, tin, and iron, linking the region to the Mediterranean and ancient Britain, and also this is around the time when hill forts began to appear, defended with walls and ditches in order to ward off rival clans. The strange order of bog burials has mystified scholars for centuries. Only in recent times have we began to understand the apparent ritual sacrifices and one such burial, the Talut Man from the 4th century BC, was so well preserved when he was found in Denmark, he was assumed to be a recent murder victim. Scholars tend to agree that Talut Man's killing was some kind of ritual sacrifice to the gods, perhaps a fertility offering. To the people who put him there, a bog was a special place, and while most of northern Europe lay under the thick canopy of forest, bogs did not. Half earth, half water, and open to the heavens, they were borderlands to the beyond. To these people, will-o'-the-wisp flickering ghostly lights that rescind when approached weren't the effects of swamp gas caused by rotting vegetation. They were fairies. The thinking goes that Tulut Man's tomb may have been meant to ensure a kind of soggy immortality for the sacrificial object, but what do you guys think of these strange little discoveries that we seemingly know nothing about until the rediscovery takes place? Comments below, and as always, Thank you for watching.